as I make my way across this country, I realize how stinking huge it is. And not only is it stinking huge, it's diverse. Outside of going to the tropics, you could see any kind of environment. We've got the badlands, desert, prairies. We've got rainforests. We've got the Maritimes, the fjords of Newfoundland, the Bay of Fundy, the West Coast. I mean, really, we've got the freaking Arctic. We've got the boreal forest. And Ontario is not much different. This is a huge province. And as you know from my first northern excursion, I barely scratched the surface. If I wanted to fully share Ontario with you, I would be in this province for a month. We're going to cover as much ground as we possibly can, but we're going to take a good, strong look and how well it stands up. There's been a lot of redirection regarding the electrification of this province. Is it going well? Is the industry stepping up? That's what we're gonna go out and find out right now. So come along for the ride and get totally trucked up. Today we've got a bit of a trip ahead of us. We're heading out of northern Ontario into north central Ontario. And I'd like to clarify something right off the start. If you take a look at my great trip north from Thunder Bay where I went all the way up to Red Lake. Well, if we were to compare that northern trip to my trip to Flin Flon, for example, you'll see that, well, it's not really north at all. In fact, where I'm going next, Sault Ste. Marie, is bordering the U.S. border and is beyond the 49th parallel. That's south. So far south, it's out of Canada for most of Canada, but it's still called north. I, I, I. We're going there. So we're going to go to Sault Ste. Marie today. Then we're going to cruise over to Sudbury, Ontario. It's going to be about 650, 700 kilometers or 450. 50 miles. I'm sitting in a Tesla supercharger here in Wawa, just topping up before I leave. I've actually got more than enough range, but here's something that I'm discovering in Ontario already. There are frequent chargers, but almost every single charger that you'll find is 50 kilowatts. IV, the ones put in through the Ontario power something. And in Sault Ste. Marie, where I'm going, they have uh, nothing but 50 kilowatt chargers in a city of 75,000 people. Huh? I guess they think everyone's driving Nissan Leafs still. But there is one Tesla supercharger there as well. But I'm kind of getting tired of Tesla superchargers because they're so freaking expensive. We're gonna start looking at every opportunity, anything 100 kilowatts or faster, we're plugging into that instead of Tesla superchargers. Let's get on the road. I'm trying to find a place with coffee. We're gonna hunt down some Java and then we're gonna hit the gas. Hit the gas. I think I need to uh, revise that. Remember back in my Saskatchewan video that I did and I mentioned how it felt kind of like back in the day when you went on your adventure trip down Route 66 with your 56 Buick and it was loaded up with gasoline or you took your 1970 station wagon and you put the kids and the jerry cans in the same seat in the back and you went cruising and you went to all these special sites. You know, went and saw the largest elastic band ball or the world's largest fry pan. Well, I'm in Wawa. And, uh, you know, I'm starting to get that same feeling. I, I haven't quite figured out what it is. So then I thought I'll pop across the street over to the Motor Inn. It, it's been bugging me all day. I can't figure out why. I just have this sense that I, I don't know what it is, but there's something about Wawa. I, I figured out what it is. I, I, I'm almost certain I've, I've, I've got it. I've got it ace now. It's the rustic nature here in Wawa. That's what it is. That's what it is certain of it yeah i'm pulling in to sault st marie right on the u.s border the sault st marie united states and sault st marie canada in fact most of the chargers that showed up were on the u.s side but eh, i don't have I don't my passport however we are going to look at the shell recharge and we're also going to look at the uh ontario based ivy chargers as well there is a tesla supercharger but i want to go for lunch so if i'm going for lunch and I'm gonna be gone for over an hour anyway, I can take a slow charger and come back to a full truck 
and pay half the price. We're gonna go and see if we can save ourselves some money to buy ourselves lunch. I'm parked here at the Shell Recharge Station. This is only one of two DC fast charger stations in Sault Ste. Marie that I can find that are 50 kilowatts or faster. Forget faster, it's only 50 kilowatts. It's the one over at Ivy, one of the two stations is broken. So that leaves three physical DC fast chargers for an entire city other than Tesla. However, I'm not gonna use the Tesla. This charges $27 an hour Canadian. And I ran that and I thought, well, I'll be done in about an hour. So I'm gonna go have my lovely lunch across the street at Taj Mahal Indian food. Woohoo! And Tesla, I worked out to be uh, well over double. So I'm gonna take the 30 bucks that I would have given to Elon Musk and I'm gonna put it in my belly. Sometime around Alberta, Saskatchewan in my great excursion across this nation, I got a software update that I didn't know about. But I noticed all my beeps, bells, whistles, buzzes, and things all changed. Uh, when you have watched the road, it's no longer a boop boop, it's a bang, 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 bang. It's a little bit more abrupt. But the coolest thing was, in the center of my main screen is a big, fat, beautiful button called Public Charging. Before you were in navigation, you had to go through your map and you do the navigation thing and then you have to go down to search and then while you're on the road, you know, where to? And you're having to stare at your, your screen here. No Tesla's on it. It's it Petro Canada down. Yeah, well, there's a surprise. Washington? Oh, Idaho. I can go to Idaho. And then it won't let you. You put, okay, charges. But it won't go through the chargers because, well, you keep your eyes on the road, the thing starts, Hey, get to watch the road, you bastard, you stupid! But you're telling me to watch the screen over here, but I can't watch the screen because i got to watch the road. You couldn't use any of this shit. You had to pull off the side of the road to do any of it. Tesla superchargers were taken off of the Ford app in my phone. They were taken off the Ford trip planner, didn't show up. So if I was driving... Uh, on my navigation thingy Madubi, and I say, you know, find chargers en route, no Teslas showed up anymore. They've been doing stuff behind the scene because they've been slowly transitioning over to Google. It's obvious that this is happening because suddenly, when I'm using Android Auto, instead of Ford Navigation, it didn't show chargers. Now it shows chargers. So it might have been Google figuring out that I'm driving electric, you know, because I'm being monitored by the great almighty powerful AI thing. As soon as I choose everything, it shows up in my trip planner on my main instrument cluster. It shows me how far until that charger they've chosen, and it shows that I've chosen a charger. So they're talking very nicely to one another. They're getting along. And on top of that, the new big fat charging button, when I hit it, public charging, all the Tesla superchargers that are NAX adapter approved showed up. Thank the freaking stars. So off we go. Got to stop at a place called Blind River, just a little top up. In fact, according to my trip uh, calculator here, I could drive to Sudbury without charging again, but I would arrive with about 6% of my battery left. I don't like bringing my battery down that low. The total that I've driven on this truck, since I got it, 12,400. And I don't want to constantly, A, be charging up to 100%. I say, oh, go ahead and do it for trips, but my trip, is like a month and a half. I'm always using fast chargers. I'm never doing trickle charge unless I'm at a hotel. You don't want to keep draining it down so it's got to, you know, go from such a low state. So I'm trying to keep it in that 80-20 rule area. And that means sometimes more frequent charging. I'm sure hoping Blind River has a place to, uh, to get things. I got my first cup of coffee today. It's terrible. I got it from a gas station. The woman was amazing. I had her laughing because I had quite an experience with coffee and not getting any today. And, and she understood my pain. And she, she gave me the coffee free. The, the button for the French vanilla one that I wanted to add a little bit to my coffee broke. So she was just laughing because I just told her a story of my, my poor coffee fiascos. So I had to use the other one, which was some other uh, unknown flavor. But whatever the unknown flavor is, it's, uh, it's not a good unknown flavor. And on that note, I've noticed something else in, since arriving in Ontario. People are willing to risk their freaking lives to gain 1.7 seconds. The speed limit is 90. There's some tolerance there. Uh, I'm not gonna comment on that tolerance. But as you notice, people are passing me as if I'm standing freaking still. Everybody, you, 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 you. Is your life that so time mismanaged? 
that you're rushing to absolutely everything. You know, like one of my truck up tours, trying to get to a coffee shop. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here we are in Blind River. I've arrived at the Ivy Charging Network that is put here by somebody. It's a very noisy street. We're on the shores of Lake Huron. And here in a town of 3,700 people, we have these two IV charging networks. We have a flow charging network, and we have a whole bunch of Teslas up the road, but they're only for Tesla users. So you do have three available 50 kilowatt fast chargers in a town of 3,700 people. And yet where I came from, Sault Ste. Marie, with 80 freaking thousand people had the same number. Very lame for Sault Ste. Marie, very good for Blind River. I've arrived in Sudbury, Ontario. My GoPro battery just died as I pulled into town. This was the nickel capital of the world. I've got NCM batteries in this thing, that's nickel. Uh, so they're a big part of lithium ion batteries produced outside of LFP batteries, which is the new Chinese patent based type of lithium iron phosphate batteries. I think it still is one of the largest producers in the world. Remember, a lot of what we rely on for battery production comes from overseas and Canada and the United States are both doing things to change that formula. Speaking of formulas, uh, the formula so far right across the country for Petro Canada. Here we are at a Petro Canada station and I've not had a very good run with these. We've, we're off to a rocking start because for the first time since I've charged up at a Petro Canada EV fast charger, the nice thing I love about these is there's no stupid load up wallet app thing. You tap your credit card, you pay the way it should be everywhere and I didn't have to pay with a credit card I paid with my debit card which was even better and even better news I am charging right now at a at 122 kilowatts this is up to 200 and it it, it is kind of rampant it's staying around that area and here's even better news for all those people who are commenting saying trying to be a you know Tesla apologist as I roast Tesla for their prices okay there are two Tesla superchargers, 75 cents a kilowatt here, and this is uh, 40 cents. Same province, same tax regime. It's not some foreign tax uh, levy or anything like that. It doesn't exist. The reality is Tesla is overcharging everywhere because they can get away with it. So Petro Canada and Shell both step up and really get this network right across the country working efficiently. People are gonna come here instead of Tesla, and that's a really good thing. This is how we need to have everything done, but this, Petro Canada, you've got so many locations that are showing up under repair or showing up not charging fast enough. Try to, try to ramp this up, make it happen. I have just departed Sudbury, Ontario. We're heading towards Toronto. We're gonna to stop overnight tonight in Barrie. I managed to catch up a little bit, get some video editing done. It's still a quagmire that I'm digging my way through, but I'm working on it. I got lots of videos in the can, and one of them I just filmed in Sudbury with the Director of Research and Innovation at Cambrian College about a new application for EVs, and you don't want to miss that episode. Sudbury is a really cool part of the world. Basically, the entire city is inside a crater. And that's why the world's largest nickel production comes out of Sudbury. Because basically a large asteroid or comet or something big slammed into the earth and created this molten soup and, and, and pushed up all that molten material and all these rich mineral deposits were brought to the surface. So, you know, they go down a mile or two, they're hitting pay dirt. And that's exactly what they're doing. It used to be quite a dirty place with Sudbury. Have they ever cleaned it up? Lots of gardens, and you can't even really see, I mean, there's still signs that there's, there's mining going on, but it's a very different operation than it was in the 70s. Uh, we have traveled 10,802 kilometers since leaving Castlegar, BC, and for only the fifth time, Blue Cruise just kicked on. Yeah, because I'm getting close to Toronto. Of course. Now, obviously Ford doesn't understand how Canadians drive. Not getting it. I guess we won't be paying those monthly Blue Cruise fees. Now here's the kind of thing that needs to go the way of the dodo. Here we are at a gas station at Severn, Port Severn. 
And the charge point, or whoever put these in, whoever decided this was a good idea, autochargers.ca, um, these are level twos. These should be in front of libraries, swimming pools, town centers, you know, you know, down the street where apartment buildings are so people can park across in their apartment building and charge uh, while they're at home. But at a gas station in the middle of nowhere, these are complete waste of time uh, at a major waypoint. So just for shits and giggles, take a look across over here, and we have an absolute bank of 250 kilowatt speeds, whereas the ones I just showed you are like six. Charge points answer to that from the row of um, I'm going to stay here overnight and live at a Petro-Canada gas station chargers is this fast charger, one of them. No marks that it is a DC fast charger zone, but here it is. Charge point put in a DC fast charging sta uh, station and, and like the last three I've been at, they read something like this. That's right. Yeah, uh, it's out of service. The emergency stop button has been busted off and, and, and it's, it's been this way who knows how long. If you're buying charge point shares as a stock investment, this is a charge point station and that's its competition. I am in no way giving investment advice, uh, but... I just checked into my hotel here in Barrie, Ontario, and thought I'd top up so I can just leave first thing in the morning. I've got tons of charge, but I wanna to get uh, totally juiced up so I don't have to even think about it, just jump in my truck in the morning and go. The hotel, unfortunately, did not have a courtesy charger, so I just popped across the street literally two minutes from my hotel to these Electrify Canada. They're running really well. I'm averaging around 135 to 140 right now. Uh, I've been at it for eight minutes, and I'm already up to 62%. So almost time to head for the hotel. But again, my batteries are showing they're getting a little warm. It's just a thing with Electrify Canada. I don't see it with any other fast chargers that I've had across Canada where they've warmed up a little bit above the normal zone. Uh, so something's going on there. I'm not quite sure what it is. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. We'll keep going, see how it all ends up. It's not terrible. It's not great. Uh, you know, I haven't had any points where I was really worried between any location, uh, which is fantastic. But. It, it's not optimal, and if one goes down, you might have some problems. Quick edit, the Ionic 5 EV that was just parked right here just took off uh, <laughs> because after three attempts, his, uh, his uh, Electrify Canada app failed him every time. Uh, he had his payment set up and he tapped it and it processed, it said go, and then it stopped working immediately. He tried it three times and finally just said, screw this crap. Uh, jumped into Zionic 5 and drove off to Petro Canada. Reliability, this guy just, he said, this is my first visit to Electrify Canada and it'll probably be my last. Uh, so there you go, off he goes to Petro Canada. I wish him luck, because uh, I've had nothing but headaches with Petro Canada. But these are buggy. Electrify Canada's gotta figure out what's going on. They're not like divided systems where you end up, if another car pulls up, you, you charge slower. It's not a system that's, um, geared off of batteries where if the battery drains it gets slower so they're the right system but their software is probably kind of like a volkswagen software with their id4s they don't seem to get software right does the whole volkswagen group that is behind these and behind their cars this is the most expensive charger that i come across this non-tesla and i'm still sitting 70 cents a kilowatt hour so we're looking at a five cent spread from the lowest price Tesla supercharger I've used. When I made my way to Barrie from Sudbury, I wasn't expecting much because, well, I'm leaving Lake Huron and I'm not getting to Lake Ontario yet and it's right in between the two Great Lakes. It's quite small. I thought, well, it's not gonna be anything great, but it didn't matter anyway because I arrived in the middle of the night. But talk about night and day, was I in for a little bit of surprise when I went for my trucked up stop in the downtown core. What a beautiful little city. What you wanna do in Barrie is you wanna walk around. You wanna go do stuff. And that's my kind of city. Barrie, Ontario's got it right. No, not the uh, actual working payphone booth. They've got great variety of level twos across the street from apartments and residential complexes. So people can plug in here, 
Uh, there's no parking charge, or I believe they might have a, a monthly parking rate here. And they can park over here and charge through the day or overnight, wake up in the morning and have a full vehicle right here here this is the right way to do it when it comes to level twos put it in residential areas and here right across from us is an absolutely epic park nice well i timed it well for toronto and the reason i timed it well is i'm heading into toronto on a saturday and everyone in toronto is leaving toronto to go somewhere for the weekend so i'm cruising along i imagine that typically I wouldn't be cruising along. Uh, I would be stuck in a quagmire of traffic. And I know this because I'm looking on the other side of the highway and realizing where all the traffic is. And it's actually moving better now. It's been just plugged over on the other side. I have a funny feeling I'm about to experience urban living. We are in downtown Toronto. Just taking a little cruise around. It is an incredibly clean city. I gotta give it that, you know, as far as cities go. It's park-like, I mean, it's not all that way, but there's, for as far as cities go, you can get everywhere on a bike. There's bike lanes absolutely freaking everywhere in Toronto. Uh, and they're many times partitioned off to protect the cyclists as well, which is great. But basically there's a cycling highway right through this city and they've slowed things down in the city center. So the speed limit's like 40 kilometers an hour, which is really smart. In fact, it's the congestion, I mean, it's Saturday. <laughs> so let's let's put that into perspective but there's absolutely no congestion right now here in Toronto so uh, I'll take it while I can get it I'm imagining it won't be that was this way on Monday morning but uh, liking it it's beautiful it's sunny it's also warmer we're kind of in the zone 7 area now we're getting close to Niagara Peninsula so I'm seeing hydrangeas I'm seeing a lot of plants that won't grow anywhere else in Ontario growing right here so this is very similar to the west coast which is pretty cool we're gonna pop in at a Tesla supercharger here hopefully it's not too crazy a race we're right in downtown Toronto we're gonna find out uh, but we're just looking for them here it's saying that I've found them uh, I don't see them so we're going to just kind of drive around and see if we can discover where they are. The Tesla Superchargers, there's 24 of them. It was in a hotel parkade and the height restriction on it was about two inches uh, shorter than my truck. So can't go there. We're going to pop out to Mississauga. It's about uh, 13 minutes away from where we are now. And supposedly they've got... <laughs> A lot of chargers there and it looks like they are nax adapter uh, approved google's saying they're not ford is saying they are tesla's saying they are uh, we're just going to drive there and find out i'm not one who's used to navigating cities and i'm doing okay i've got lots of choice there's flow there's something called evc there's a there's a couple of new ones that i don't have apps for i might have apps for but i've not heard of them before so I just don't want to download more apps. So we're just going to pass those ones. Here it's definitely showing me now what my rate is compared to standard rate. So standard rate is 48 cents a kilowatt if you own a Tesla. And then it's 75 cents for me at the one coming up here. That sucks. But hey, I've opened up the network to non-Teslas. Uh, I guess that's the, the price you pay, literally. I am at the Tesla Superchargers here in mississauga ontario just outside of toronto and it is impressive so we've got one two three four five six seven eight eight units there and then we've got a bank of units that runs all the way down to this sign down there i believe there's a total of 32 chargers could be even more <laughs> very nice and this is common for tesla in the urban centers getting around in the greater metropolitan Toronto area, I believe it's called, going down to Hamilton, Burlington, going down to London, Ontario, all the way down to Niagara and to the States. There is a comprehensive network of EV chargers by many, many different providers, and all of them around 100 kilowatt or faster, which is really good. So you have no worries coming to uh, this part of Ontario at all, and there are a lot of EVs around, not just Teslas. I've seen every kind of EV you can think of. Sunny, 18 degrees, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Nice breeze coming in off the lake. Might as well call it an ocean. 
absolutely fantastic. I love the city. It's vibrant. Uh, it's got uh, everything going for it. it. Really does. We'll wait until winter. We're in Balzac's Distillery District, a historic district here in downtown Toronto. I have to be a little careful because there's a band playing some really awesome tunes, but I'll get copyright struck uh, if it picks up the cover song on YouTube. Yeah, it's actually got that bad now. So hopefully all we hear is drums. Uh, so you can see here, this is the Distillery uh, District. It's pretty cool that this has been preserved. Of course, the road that it guided me to on Google uh, is right is right there underneath that uh, that new high rise. So eh. we're gonna pop into Balzac's Coffee and uh, check this place out, man. It is pretty freaking cool. And then we're gonna get on the road for Kingston, where I'm gonna crash and get some more content to you. Well, this has to be the most boring part of my entire trip across Ontario. Why? There's no stress with charging. The chargers are everywhere. Getting to them's a problem. I'm on the 401 and you've got to go off a clover leaf and then enter some area you're not familiar with and then drive 10 kilometers to find something. So, but that's the same with gas or getting yourself a coffee or taking a pee. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's all the same on the 401. And the entire 401 seems to be operating in Blue Cruise. I guess it's the only highway in Canada that's operating in Blue Cruise, but that means I don't have to really do it. It's doing everything. It's, it's letting people in, it's moving over, it's doing the thing. I'm not doing anything. I have come to realize though, how fortunate I am because I look at this as a novelty. Tens of thousands of cars crammed into a space driving like mayhem to try to get somewhere, everyone jockeying for their position. It's a very stressful thing. And, and I'm looking at it going, wow, that's really weird. And I'd be doing it if I was here for more than a week. Living this day to day, I've come to appreciate, you know, people are under a lot of stress and they are limited for time. And a large portion of their time is driving. I don't have to deal with that all the time. Even the, the fumes. I mean, when I was at uh, Balzac, the historical distillery, district in Toronto, I was saying to someone standing next to me, wow, is it ever strong like the smell? Eh? And they were like, what smell? What are you talking about? It's a clear day. The smoke's gone. It's beautiful. Out. They smell nothing. I'm gagging. Like the fumes, the exhaust, my eyes are sore. They're red. It's amazing how our bodies acclimatize to a situation. You know, all I snort up is tree pollen. I think I'm going to stick with more rural living. This, this will definitely knock a few years off your life. Driving across Ontario, Southern Ontario, is freaking boring. Thank goodness for Blue Cruise on the 401. It goes on and on and on and on. Traveling across Saskatchewan, Manitoba, at least you can see something. Like there's no mountains here, it's pretty freaking flat. It undulates a little bit and there's just scrub and then just wide, divided highway riding off into nowhere for a really long time. People commute this. They do this every day back and forth. Man, I'd go mental. And out here, you don't need a truck. If you work out here on the farms, yeah, but for the vast majority of the urbanites out here, I'm seeing not a lot, which is really good. I've seen a lot more cars. Uh, still tons of SUVs. For every 20 cars, you'll see a truck. I talked to a woman this afternoon at, um, oh, what the hell is it called? Barclays, Bank Labs, Blah Blah, Blagger Vlagas, the Blah Blah, Flagga Blagga, Flagga Vlags, Vladimir's, v Voldemort's. There. I talked to her. She commutes 16 kilometers 
one way. I asked her what she drove. She, she drives a Suburban. She's curious about EVs. She was very concerned about uh, range, how much they cost to operate. I said less than a Suburban. I'm just outside Kingston, heading for Ottawa in the morning, and we'd call it a night, but I thought I'd pop over and show you this. Another Petro Canada up and running, and this is a 350 kilowatt fast charger, and there's two of them, which is quite nice. What I think is funny, however, is if you take a look over there for the trucks, there's about 12 gasoline stalls on both sides pull through four semis. And then over here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pumps for gasoline and two of these. So it's coming along, but we've got a lot of extra space over here, and we got a lot of extra space over there. I'm thinking, Petro Canada, go drive by a couple of Tesla superchargers, and I think you might get some really cool ideas. I've just pulled through Nepean, Nepean, or Nepean. Nepan, Nepan, Nepan. Uh, I booked my hotel in Ottawa while I was parked at the Tesla supercharger charging up. Uh, seems to be averaging now 75 cents everywhere in Ontario. Not bad, not great, but I'll take it for the speed. They got me. We're now heading into Ottawa, the capital of Canada. We're gonna hang out for a couple of days in Ottawa so I can get some more videos out for you. I'm gonna pull in for my last Ontario trucked up stop where we'll be going into the drip house for a couple cups of Joe. And then I'm gonna go find some grocer because I've just been eating crap and I feel like crap because I've been eating all this crap. So I'm gonna get like a banana and a head of broccoli, barking twigs. Here we are at the Supreme Court of Canada. I did uh, go over and knock on the door, and it's Sunday, Thanksgiving weekend. I'm a little upset they're closed. I wanted to discuss my very unpatriotic parking ticket. Probably the wrong building. What a perfect time to wrap up our trucked up coffee stop across Ontario, right here in the capital of Canada. And it's also time to talk about the electrification of Ontario, the electric highway. How has Ontario done? I can say with confidence that this province is trucked up totally trucked up. Are there problems? Yes, as we've seen in many parts of the country. When we start to get up north and into rural areas, those waypoints need to be a little bit more frequent. I would love to go from Nipigon to Timmins. I might do it on the way back, but it's really touchy and no one should have to travel in any vehicle and feel stress all the time because they're not quite sure if they're gonna make it. And that's a reality in the very northern ends of Ontario. There's chargers there, all of them are 50 kilowatt. Until we get down to Sault Ste. Marie and South, we're not seeing a lot of DC fast chargers unless they're Tesla. That needs to be developed. If it is developed, that's gonna change everything for people who own EV trucks and wanna get out with the family, go camping, strap a boat on the back or a travel trailer and go explore this amazing province. They're gonna do it if that network is there and it's so close. The other issue, of course, is the number of chargers at these waypoints, these critical locations, rather than one or two, one breaks down and you've got a serious problem. So why not have four or six or eight, just like Tesla does? So even if you have challenges with one or two units, there's still a place to charge. We need to start thinking of these places more like gas stations and having more available units at each one of these locations. It's just economic sense. You put the infrastructure in, you pay the money up front, people are gonna come and they're gonna come in larger numbers. It's just a step away, but everywhere else in this province, Wow, you can get anywhere you wanna go and easily so. You're not even gonna think about charging as an issue. I haven't, and I've driven this province thoroughly. Congratulations to Ontario, only the third province so far in Canada to get the official trucked up stamp of approval. What an accomplishment, good work Ontario. And now I better dust up on my French and pull out my Google Translate because I'm off to the largest province in this country and I plan on traversing it and that's Quebec so stay tuned it's coming up 
And I hope that you'll join me for all of these as I travel across Canada and also the wrap up in the end that's gonna be very revealing. I hope you stick around for that. And to encourage you, I'm only a dozen or two subscribers away from hitting such an important milestone uh, for the channel, and that is 2,500 subscribers. We're just about there. So please, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button below, at least the like and notification icon, so you can keep in touch and also know when the, the newest videos are coming out. But that is a massive milestone. And then we're gonna shoot for 5,000, because at 5,000, everything changes with YouTube, and it really helps the channel out. So let's just drive for that, and I wanna thank you all for for getting me as far as this channel has gone already. It's 100% because of you. So once again, as always, thanks for watching.